Good evening and thank you for joining News 20 at 5. I'm Sierra Richardson. And I'm Morgan Martin. Early voting kicked off today in Florida. Voters lined up this morning in Leon County to cast their ballot. The clock is ticking down as residents have until November 6 to place their vote for the candidate they want in office. Leon County has nine precincts for voters. More information on how you can vote, go to leonvotes.org. The Army National Guard has found a temporary base on Florida A&M University's campus. The Guard came to assist Florida's panhandle after the destruction of Hurricane Michael. Sergeant Richard Caton says that in his unit traveled all the way from Lakeland and does not plan to leave until residents in the panhandle are stable. So we've been here for a little over a week now and our end result is to return the citizens and the municipalities to normal. So we're providing assistance for uh, basic needs, infrastructure, uh, things of that nature like water and roadway clearance, utilities. So our job ends here when the, basically the governments can stand on their own. Sergeant Caton says the experience in Tallahassee has been amazing and welcoming. In the wake of Hurricane Michael, the Leon County Sheriff's Office hosted a farm share distribution to provide the community with free food. Hurricane Michael caused major power outages. Many had to throw out their perishable items. The Leon County Sheriff's Office hosted its annual farm share distribution and passed out food to the community. Resident Alex Egner, who lost power during the storm, says he is grateful for the help. Pretty important. My refrigerator is almost empty. Residents were able to receive a bulk of food items and water. The day provided aid and an opportunity for the community to come together. Hurricane Michael caused major power outages. Many had to throw out their perishable items. The Leon County Sheriff's Office hosted its annual farm share distribution and passed out food to the community. Resident Alex Egner, who lost power during the storm, says he is grateful for the help. Pretty important. My refrigerator is almost empty. Residents were able to receive a bulk of food items and water. The day provided aid and an opportunity for the community to come together. Some, some chicken, uh, juices, potatoes. Mostly it's uh, refrigerated items that we lost during the, during the storm. Uh, waters. All that stuff got, all that stuff uh, had to be thrown out. Hundreds lined up in a drive through assembly line. They were greeted by officers as they placed food in their vehicles. Volunteer Ann Floyd Lucas says this year's event is vital to the community. Helping others, unity, we made it, God is good. During the time of need, farm share distribution provided the relief to help the people in this community continue to succeed. The Leon County Sheriff's Office and Living Stones International provided over 36,000 pounds of food to the Tallahassee community. In a time of crisis, Florida State University displayed its unmatched support following the devastation of Hurricane Michael. Multi-skilled journalist Maya John Charles join, joins us live in the studio to explain more. Maya, what can you tell us? That's correct, Morgan. FSU created the Seminole Emergency Relief Fund to aid faculty, staff, and students in the wake of the catastrophe. Hurricane Michael hit the FSU Panama City campus, causing major damages. The Panama City location is hoping to start classes on October 29th. In the meantime, it's holding counseling services and providing online classes for students. Live in, st in the studio, I'm Maya Jean-Charles, News 20. Thank you, Maya. Over the weekend, many animals found a new home. Multi-skilled journalist Michaela Sherman tells us more. Music was playing and people gathered, all for a great cause, to adopt a pet. Cat Fest annual charity fundraiser gives displaced animals a second chance while bringing the community together. We have about six different rescues that are um, all around from the area and they've brought out a lot of their cats and dogs out to be adopted. From swinging swords to tasty food, Cat Fest gives people like native Jacob Godwin an inclusive environment to thrive. I think it's great that people get an outlet for that in a place where, you know, they're really searching for expression, searching for a place to call their own and to make something really special. This jam-packed event drew in people from all over 
while raising money for a great cause. It's always a good time when there's music and food involved, but it's even better when it's lending a helping hand to animals who need a home. Reporting in Tallahassee, News 20. All proceeds raised at the event were donated to black cats and dogs, feline advocates of Leon County, and next year's Cat Fest. Officials in Taiwan are trying to find the cause of a deadly train derailment. They say at least 18 people were killed when the train jumped the tracks in Yilin County. Nearly 180 other people were injured. Eight train cars flew off the tracks and five of them flipped upside down. 2,000 people have left the migrant caravan headed for the U.S. and are back in Honduras. That's according to the Honduran Foreign Ministry. The country's president is promising to offer jobs and other types of aid to those who come back. But there are still hundreds of men, women, and children continuing their desperate journey north. At least 640 people crossed the border and registered for asylum in Mexico and are still more are trying to get through. President Donald Trump has threatened to cut aid to Central American nations and send troops to the U.S. border if Mexico fails to stop the surge. Poll stations in Afghanistan have had their opening hours extended after the much-anticipated parliamentary elections have been played by logistical issues across the country, preventing many Afghans from voting. The elections, delayed by three years because of violence, started on Saturday morning with thousands of candidates including over 400 women vying for 249 seats. So many people are running the ballot paper, looks like a newspaper, underlining the enthusiasm for this election, even in the face of almost certain attacks. According to the UN, more civilians have been killed or injured in airstrikes so far this year than all of last year. Good evening, everyone, and happy Monday. I am Destiny Taylor with your latest in entertainment news. Last week, we reported that rapper T.I. was in a bit of controversy over releasing a video that featured a lookalike of First Lady Melania Trump. It is now being reported that the lookalike, whose real name is Melanie Martin, is receiving death threats. The actress told TMZ it's actually unbelievable that people take this so seriously. Martin says she is simply an independent woman trying to make a living and feed herself. Seems like every day Beyonce and Jay-Z are wowing us with something new. The Carters have raised six million dollars that will go towards cancer research. The couple hosted a star-studded gala for the City of Hope. City of Hope is a nonprofit or organization that focuses on cancer research and treatment. The CEO of City of Hope said he Beyonce and Jay-Z have, have helped the organization tremendously. Now, of course, today we are at a high of 77 and low of 60. On Tuesday, we are at a high of 74 and low of 58. We are expecting some rain there, folks. And then on Wednesday, we are expecting a high of 81 and low of 59 and partly cloudy. And on Thursday, we are expecting some rain again with a high of 67 and low of 57. And on Friday, we have a high of 67 and low of 49. Well, welcome back to News 20 at 5. I'm Bria Wesley with your sports. Wake Forest couldn't rain on the Seminoles parade for the homecoming matchup, and they snatched the win 38 to 17. What coach Willie Taggart described this season, a continual and pace rise, and it showed on Saturday. It began with a 10-0 deficit that seemed a little familiar, but that feeling didn't last long when a defensive sack by Brian Burns changed the momentum and the offense, offense started cooking. Even DeAndre, DeAndre Francois' tight 21-yard pass to fresh, true freshman Treshawn Harrison almost lost it, but he kept it right into the end zone, continuing the lead for the Noles. That's going to do it for us tonight. For Aaliyah and Bria, I'm Morgan Martin. And I'm Sierra Richardson. Thanks for watching. And remember to also follow us at FAMUTVNews.com for more news updates. Have a great evening.